Brown's uh, tackles are beat up. Uh, Jedrick Wills hasn't played at all. Jack Conklin hasn't played at all. Uh, three of them went down last week. Uh, Jermaine Effetti will be able to play left tackle uh, this week. Lance, um, when you look at it, you know, Kevin Stefanski, Ken Dorsey, they've said this week they're going to do some game plans. They've installed, they installed first and second down earlier in the week, third down today. Um, what are some of the things you do to help out tackles that you know might, might be a little overmatched or, or just need some help, maybe? Well, you know, it, the way you look at this is that when you go against Micah Parkins and Lawrence is that these are elite guys, whether you had Wills in there, Conklin, Jones, you have to help on these game records, right? And Mike Parkins, he's a game record. So a couple things they got to do. First of all, they got to run the ball at him, and I, they got to make him play the run. They cannot, allow, they cannot allow an opposing defensive end, no matter who it is, just to only rush the passer. They have to make that defensive end worry about the run, getting blocked down getting reads, counters, et cetera. You know, they have to do those things. They have to use a short passing game if necessary. They have to make sure that they're they're chipping with the tight ends or um, running backs out of the backfield. They want to make sure they change the launch point, which I think for me has always been the most important, where you're not setting up at 5, 9, or, you know, 12 yards. You are, you are constantly moving that pocket inside, outside the pocket, on the run, semi-roll, just doing different things so – that defensive end, who is really good, doesn't know where you're going to be on every single snap. And that's where Watson's feet can really help him. All right, so we'll take a look at, uh, and you mentioned some of the things we're going to take a look at visually. Um, so this one, run at the rushers. we got some clips here. What do you see and, and what are you talking about here? Well, the first one, you got David Njoku who's with the guys inside and going to block down. Then you can see Njoku up top block down on the defensive end. So that defensive end has to worry about uh, the outside guy, is he going for a router? Is he coming to block me? Then you're going to see um, running the ball right at that r r hard rusher draw route, uh, a draw uh, scheme. And then finally you get uh, you get a, uh, a counter inside where they're going to push the pile. And basically what you're, what you're saying to these defensive ends is if you just get upfield, we're going to kick you out. If you just get upfield, we're going to run draws on you. So you, you make these people understand that they have to read their keys. And if you don't do that, what these guys do, the Miles Garrett's of the world, they will just pin their ears back and, and rush. Now they're not worried about the run. However, if you break some big runs because that defensive end is not doing his job because he wants to rush the passer only, now you got a problem with the defense. So the Browns, first thing they got to do without question is run the ball and run at those rushers. So in effect, you're slowing down the guys and, and um, making sure that they can't focus on getting um, to the quarterback. The, the second one, um, and you said this one is, is one you thought was important, changing the launch point. So take us through these. So you can see in camp here, right, just a little play action setting up about 8 to 10 yards, very classical kind of move, right? Well, he can be there, but he can't be here all the time. Then you're going to see a semi-roll from Flacco last year where it's a still a set pass, but he's moving outside the pocket. And what you get out of these two things is you get an example of two different launch points. Well, there's a bunch of launch points. And the Browns have to keep continuously move Watson off the point, right, or off his mark. So he's not a sitting duck for defensive ends, Micah Parsons, for example, and Lawrence, for example. So they just got to keep him on the move, uh, change it up, run the ball. So it starts with running the ball, then change that launch point, kind of frustrates those uh, those speed rushing DNs. And there you see the long pass to uh, Jerome Ford. All right, third uh, point that we talked about a little bit, uh, chip or help on the ends. Um, take us through these and, and what you see, what you mean here. Well, there's a couple things, right? So you're going to see Njoku catch the ball. He's going to run with the ball really, really well after he catches it. Uh, the Jets will actually twist here, but if you see where he lines up, you're going to see it again here. So now you get so now you get the ability to chip on those ends, and you're going to see um, Teller come inside out. So what it does is allows you can always help on the defensive end, and then you can check it down, get rid of the ball fast. Now, if you're a right guard, if you see Teller here at the right guard, he can let Posick work by himself and then go help Hudson. And you can see he helps Hudson physically. And there's so there's a number of things you can do. First of all, never leave those guys um, unblocked or a one-on-one. -on -one. Try to chip them. Try to use the guard to get out there if you can, if the front allows it. So there's a bunch of different things, but try not to leave those tackles who are unexperienced or just because they're going against elite guys. 
regardless of who plays against Michael Parsons, you better have a plan. Regardless if everybody's healthy, you're still going to have to chip on him every time it's a true pass set. The other thing that you see with the um, the play with Njoku is he's wide open. And, and think about David Njoku and how he, good he is um, after the catch with yak yardage. He chips and runs out, and nobody's by him. The, the, the Browns should say thank you every time a defense does that. Well, yeah, and then you get rid of the ball. Like you said, you get rid of the ball quicker. You're taking less hits. Uh, those chips frustrate the defensive ends. Those ch uh, The guard's working. You know, they're so good inside, those guards can help if they if they get the front. Uh, and everybody's a multiple front now, so there's going to be some times they can help as well as chip. But never leave Micah Park. It's always frustrate him. Run the ball at him. Change the launch point. Uh, run to him. Run away from him. Don't let him know where you're going to be, and that'll be very successful for the Browns. So the other thing, use the quick game to stay out of obvious uh, passing situations. Well, again, another launch point, right? So you're going to see uh, just a little slant here. Uh, you're going to see during camp they worked a lot of this is just a hitch to said Tillman early in camp. Just the things that, you know, Watson throws a great ball here. What I mean by the quick game is maybe use the quick game also as an extended run if you're not running the ball very well. You don't want to be second 10. Second 10 is a pass down. Second 10 now allows these elite defensive ends to pin their ears back and go because they know that you have to throw the football. So you're going to see Watson catch the ball. He's going to get rid of it quickly. This is something that I think the Browns could do on first down. So if you think about the progression of what you got here, you can you can make sure that you chip on them if it's a pass down. Try to get uh, yards on first down so you have a run pass option type uh, on, on second and third. You want to make sure that you change the launch points. You want to make sure that you run the ball at them so they have to read their keys. You get, it's a mixed bag of things. You have to do all of them to keep those defensive ends honest.